the, the, the swift response of our people tells me that whether the devil likes it or not, the revival is here. Amen. Say to your distant, social distance neighbor, Amen. the revival is here. <laughs> the revival is here. Glory to God Almighty. Those of you in the green room, say the revival is here. The revival is here. Yeah. Those of you in the miracle hall, say the revival is here. The revival is here. Those of you in the men's conference room, say the revival is here. The revival is here. It's here. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's read the word of God together. One, two, go. No, let's read from the King James. King James, loud and clear. One to read. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Forget it not. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Amen. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. If I'm thinking correctly, uh, if I'm seeing well, what this verse is saying is, that the words of my mouth is a vehicle, the carrier of wisdom and understanding. The words of my mouth, my words are carriers of wisdom and understanding. And the scripture says the moment you begin to decline from the words of my mouth, when you get tired of hearing wise words, words that are able to make you better and greater, then what will happen is you begin to lose wisdom. You decline in wisdom. Your wisdom decreases because the Bible says Jesus increased in wisdom. So if he increased in wisdom, uh, that means some people are decreasing their wisdom. The scripture lets us know that it's possible to forget wisdom. So some people might start well and wisely but somewhere along the line, they end up losing. And I taught you the other day that one of the reasons why people go from being wise and great to being foolish and stupid is that they end up holding the rewards of wisdom and losing wisdom along the way. Because this is wisdom. You have to hold on to wisdom. But the good thing about wisdom is that it comes with lots of benefits. And sometimes we pick the benefits of wisdom to the point that the benefit becomes our primary focus. And there's no more room for wisdom in our lives. Like King Solomon. The benefits of wisdom. He became so wealthy, so powerful. But then he needed to maintain his power according to human wisdom, you know. And the only way to maintain power was to have to build alliance with neighboring countries or distant powerful countries. And the way to build alliance with such countries was for him to marry the daughters of the kings. And so the point is, how many women are you going to marry well, he ended up with 700 wives, 300 concubines. At the end, his wisdom became what? Corrupted. His wisdom became madness. So that the man who was once cherished by the whole world suddenly became the disease of the world. The same man who said wisdom is the best thing and then he turned out saying wisdom is madness in Ecclesiastes. The book of Ecclesiastes is the expression of uh, the life of a man who had wisdom but then held on to the benefits of wisdom at the expense of wisdom. It's very possible that as you begin to become great and prosperous, you rise in your career. You become so busy. Somebody's praying, Lord, give me children. And then God finally decide to give your husband a wife and now you have children and suddenly you are so busy raising children that you don't have time to build your relationship with God you see so you are God give me a job and now God answered your prayers and he has surprised you right with what a good job maybe fortune 500 job or your business is prospering things are doing well 
then guess what? All that you have, the benefits of wisdom, begin to take the place of wisdom. And gradually, this is wisdom. This is one of the benefits of wisdom. And then you have to make room for the benefits of wisdom. And then you have to displace wisdom. You forget wisdom. And you hold on to the benefits of wisdom. Until you realize that wisdom is the center and the pillar is the only thing that holds any and everything. So, but if you lose the center, it's only a matter of time. Every other thing will fall apart. So, the Bible says you are to get wisdom. So, don't decline from the words of my mouth. The more words I receive, the wiser I become. Is somebody still here? At the end of the day, Solomon said, vanity upon vanity, all is vanity. Because if you pursue the benefits of wisdom at the expense of wisdom, it will soon become vanity. Nothing makes sense if the center does not hold. Are you with me? Why do I have to remind you of this? Because of what I'm teaching about. I'm teaching about the worth of wisdom or the benefits of having wisdom. So the scripture says get wisdom. That means you don't have to die foolish. You don't have to be a fool. If you are a fool you don't have to remain a fool. Get wisdom. That means wisdom can be acquired. If there's an area of your life that is not making sense it's because there is a shortage of wisdom in that area. And so he's saying, don't sit down and complain about the shortage of wisdom. What should you do? Get wisdom. Say, get wisdom. Say, I'll get wisdom. Say it louder, I'll get wisdom. He said, when you get wisdom, get understanding and then forget it not. You get, but don't forget. Because once you begin to get wisdom and you get understanding, the possibility of forgetting wisdom is high because you can forget wisdom once you feel like the benefits of wisdom has become your portion. So you're going to see the benefits of wisdom but don't let it make you forget wisdom. It's wisdom not to forget wisdom. Okay? Verse 6 everyone. Let's read verse 6. Forsake her not. What will she do to you? Okay, let me hear you read together. She shall what? Preserve thee. Read on. Love her and she shall keep thee. Continue. Let me hear you read verse 7 and 8 loud and clear. Continue verse 8 and 9. Verse 9, loud and clear. Somebody say amen. amen. Say louder, amen. amen. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace. A crown of glory shall she deliver unto you. In the first service, I talked about uh, the worth of wisdom and I said, the first worth of wisdom is that wisdom is preservative in nature. Wisdom preserves and keeps. And I don't want to go back into that because I've already shared that. You can watch that later on. In this second service, I want us to read verse uh, verse, verse 8. Verse 7 says, Wisdom is the principal thing. 1 Kings 4.29 Then we go to verse 8. Read 1 Kings 4.29 1 Kings 4.29 Want to read everyone? And what happened? God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much and largeness of heart. Read on. Even as the sand that is on the seashore 
verse 30. Everyone read one to go. And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the east country and all the wisdom of Egypt. Uh-huh. Read on. For he was what? Wiser than all men. Is it possible for one man to be wiser than all men? In my days, I believe I will. And it's wisdom if you will listen. It's possible to be wiser than all men. When God gives to you, you will be shocked. Now, read on. For he was wiser than all men, than Ethan, the Ezraite, the number one, the wisest man that used to live because he had secular wisdom, intellectual wisdom, than Herman and Chalcol and Dada, the son of Mahol, and his what? Fame was in all the nations round about. God gave this son of what you can't even describe, wisdom. And suddenly, instead of shame, his fame went round about. Look at the last verse. The Bible tells us uh, in the next verse, he, he, uh, 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 he spoke Proverbs and all of that. But that's not where I'm going to. Verse 34. Everybody read verse 34. One to go. The last verse. The last verse. And, no, the last verse, 34. 34. All right, let's read 34 together. One, two, go. And there came of all people to hear the wisdom of Solomon from all kings of the earth which had heard of his wisdom. So, his fame didn't just went abroad. His honor. People came from all over the world. But the kind of people that came is what really touched my heart. It wasn't just regular people. Kings came to listen to Solomon's wisdom. Please don't let me scream with my microphone. We have more services to go. Give me the equality sound that will not allow me to scream. Kings gathered to listen to him. Let me prophesy to someone here. Very soon. Very soon. You will be in high demand. For some of you, it will begin this way. You will be invited to speak to kings. And after a while, you won't be able to attend invitations. They will come to you. You, you will pack stadium like 60, 70, 80,000 rulers across the globe. Governors, presidents, people will pay to come and hear you by virtue of divine wisdom in the name of Jesus Christ. Sit down. Now go back to Proverbs chapter 4 verse 8. Let's read verse 8. Verse 8 it says Proverbs 4 8 quickly please. It says can you do that quickly? Thank you very much. Everybody really want to go. Exalt her and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. So, so he said, this wisdom that I am asking you to get, and the understanding I said, with all your getting, get understanding. He said, this thing I'm asking you to get is a serious thing. When you get it, it will preserve you. But it will not just preserve, it will keep you. The only problem is when you are preserved and you are kept and all you enjoy in life is that you're preserved and kept, then your life becomes almost like a nightmare. 
Because a time comes where your mind, your heart begin to tell you that there's more to life than just being preserved. That's why when you got your first job or your second job or that job, you were so excited and you testified. And you thought that was the biggest breakthrough until four or five months down the line. Then you discover that the job is a job and you walk, you have to walk the walk. And, but not only that, you now get tired of where you are. The paycheck that you were dancing, oh, I'll be paid $40 an hour, $42 an hour, $32 an hour. Now, your prayer point is, oh Lord, I need a raise. I need a raise. I need a raise. How many of you have prayed for a raise? Okay, it's good to pray for a raise. How many of you were at some point, let's say you were at some point excited about that job, but now it's not as if you don't like the job, but you feel like you need a raise. Oh, you feel like you need a raise. Okay. You feel like you need something better, right? Now, you may still keep the job. The job may be keeping you, but at some point you discover that just being preserved is not enough. Being kept is not enough. However, the best thing that can happen to you in life is to be preserved and kept. Because it doesn't matter what you have in this life. It doesn't listen to me when I'm talking to you. Just look up here. Unless you are taking your notes. So if you're not taking notes, just look up, please. Don't be distracted. It doesn't matter what you have in life. If you're not preserved, then you will be wasted. Are you with me? So the foundation of every benefit or value or worth of divine wisdom is preservation. Is it possible for someone to rise to the top and get wasted? Yes. How are the mighty fallen? Is it possible for someone to have a job and lose the job? Yes. People lose jobs. So what is divine wisdom? When God preserves your life God keeps your life then every other thing will make sense he brought me up also out of a miry clay, out of a horrible pit he set my feet upon the rock to stand he put a song in my mouth singing songs in miry clays doesn't make a lot of sense having breakthrough in miry clay or in horrible pit doesn't make a lot of sense so, standing on a solid rock, having stability, is what makes a lot of sense. Because, huh, I don't want to use an illustration because it may look like I'm saying I'm talking about something. But, um, that's what came to my mind. Um, there's someone, um, I think that's like three years ago. Um, this person is married to somebody. But whatever he did, he he didn't want to impregnate his wife. And we're like, oh, why are you misbehaving? And, and, and we realized that he didn't want to impregnate his wife because he was trying to play a smart game with the woman. You understand? So, of course, unfortunately, they are not married again. And what she was doing for him, she withdrew and canceled it. But the point is that you find certain people that they, they, if you are not standing, if you are not stable, is wrong to acquire or accumulate certain things. Because if you accumulate certain things without being stable, those things will become your demise. Are you with me? So, the scripture says wisdom will preserve your life. But then it said, if you exalt her, if you get wisdom, you get understanding, she will preserve you and keep you. But you come to a place, you say, no, I'm not just happy with being preserved alone. 
I'm in church on Fire International. But I want to be used by God. I want to be a great instrument. I don't want to be a church number. I want to be a church member. I don't want to be a church member alone. I want to be a church minister. I don't want to be a church minister alone. I want to be a church leader. I don't want to be a church leader alone. I want to be one of the core in the ministry. That is, you want to rise, right? He said, if you exalt wisdom, then things begin to change. Preservation is foundation. But after you are preserved, you must move to the next level. What is the next level? The next level is where you are promoted. Someone say, I will be promoted. Someone more time say, I will be promoted. So, promotion, keep that scripture on. It said, if you want to be promoted, your responsibility is to exalt wisdom. Is to exalt wisdom. So, what is the second worth of value of wisdom? The second worth of wisdom. Remember, the Bible says wisdom is better than strength. The second worth of wisdom, or the value of wisdom, is called covenant promotion. Say divine promotion. Say divine promotion. I guarantee you, life. Without promotion is a life in stagnation. A life in stagnation is a life in frustration. A life in frustration is a life in defeat. Did you get that? A life without promotion is a life in what? Stagnation. A life that is in stagnation is a life that is in frustration. And a life that is in frustration will eventually be a life in defeat if it is not well handled. So in life, you must constantly strive to be promoted. Media, can you keep that scripture up? Keep the scripture up unless you are putting my coat up. I say you always have to keep something on the screen. Thank you. Either the scripture or the coat or the point I'm making. So you keep that. Always exchange those things. Exalt her and she shall promote thee. Why is promotion important? Because if you are not promoted in life, eventually you will be frustrated. You will be frustrated. I have seen many people that are defeated today because they got frustrated. Some people quit their job because they got frustrated. There's someone in this church that was so tired of her job. She said, I quit. I'm leaving. Why? There's no room for growth. I'm leaving. And so she told them she put in her two weeks resignation. And when she was about to leave, she thought she had God say leave. I said, okay. Stay a little bit. But she said, leave. I want to face this. I want to do that. I said, it's okay. <laughs> then the company called her. The company said, Ah, you are young. We can't afford to leave you, let you go. You are smart. We want you to stay in this company. What will it take? Ah, uh, number one, say promote me. Number two, give me this position. Number three, give me this pay. Do you know that they paid her exactly what she asked? Later she said, ah, I should have asked for more. This is the person that thought God was leading her to quit and leave the company. And she had put in two weeks notice. When promotion came, she stayed. It's almost one year now. She's still there. God has not spoken again. Why? Because promotion brings excitement. It terminates frustration. It gives you a sense of progress. When life is void of progress, it becomes a burden. If you are a single lady, you are a miss. There's nothing wrong with being a miss. But you want to be promoted to becoming a missus. If you are a single man, there's nothing wrong with just being a mister. You want to be a mister, husband of somebody. So it takes promotion to live a life of bachelorhood or spinsership and be settled. And now don't be promoted in the wrong way. Because if the wisdom of God 
is promoting you, we're going to see other benefits of the wisdom of God. But if the wisdom of God is promoting you, it will not promote you to where he can't preserve you. So you have to consider preservation. Promotion is one of the major benefits of divine wisdom. And let me tell you, God wants to promote you financially. God wants to promote you relationally. Some of you are currently friends with so to speak regular ordinary people. We're not despising anyone. But even the Bible says that seest thou a man diligent in his business, in his work. What will happen to him? He will stand before who? Great men. He will not stand before ordinary men. So even the Bible recognizes the fact that there are ordinary men and there are great men. Are you with me? There are ordinary men. So you can choose to be friends with ordinary men. But there is a kind of promotion that will come to you that suddenly your circle of friendship change. It's coming to you. I said it's coming to you. And when your circle of friendship changes, you are now hanging out with billionaires, billionaires, intellectual people. That doesn't mean you despise other people. But that also means that you don't always come down to explain things to people that are, are, are low down. Because sometimes people that are beneath don't understand principles. Yet there are those that are low and they are hungry. But when you start rising in life, I promise you, the way the game is played is completely different. When you are a nobody, you play the game anyhow. If you are playing soccer, now, you play it anyhow. You're playing, there's no goal post. You play anyhow. Hey, pa, pa, I've seen my kids play. Play soccer. They kick anywhere. Kick the ball, kick the balloon, anything they play. They kick everywhere. There's no goal post. But you can't be on the pitch. Whether you're a football player, playing for Chicago Bears, or playing soccer for either Arsenal or Chelsea or one of those top European uh, soccer team. You can't be playing on the field and just be kicking the ball anywhere. They'll fire you. Yeah. There's a Colombian player that that I think was it 19, 1994. Oh, you, good. You know that story, right? 1994. They call him Escobar. They were playing World Cup. And he accidentally scored an own goal against his country, Colombia. Ah! They lost the game. Few days later, they killed him. Yeah, because when you are playing professional, international, people bet on you. People put down millions. They bet on the team that we win. And to be honest, the Colombian team was a better team. But one mistake from Escobar, bah, the team entered his goalpost. They killed him. When you begin to rise, the game changes. And that's why you need to connect with those that are there. Ventilation here is different from ventilation at the top. The way you say things, the way you act, the way you think is complete, should be completely different. When you are like a nobody, nobody pays attention or lots of attention to your thoughts. They just say, look at that fool. Mm -hmm. But the moment you begin to rise, that's why when a pastor begins to rise in church and find himself, when, or when a regular person, when I begin to give you the pulpit, I am paying more attention to you than you can imagine. What a regular member can do and get away with, you do. I will let you know. Yeah. Did, you, did I hear you say that? Did you do that? And so because if I wasn't taught this by my fathers, my mentors, I would have made a lot of mistakes. As God begins to promote you, things ought to change. Relationship ought to change. The way you think ought to change. But the Bible says before you enjoy promotion, you have to exalt wisdom. And so I put it this way. 
if you want to enjoy promotion, you may not need to pray for promotion. You just need to exalt wisdom. What kind of wisdom? The wisdom that is from above. God's own wisdom. God's own wisdom. God's prescription to humans, human predicaments. God's wisdom. God's solution uh, to complicated situation. God's wisdom. What's God's wisdom? God's wisdom is God's way of doing things. Divine wisdom is God's own way of doing things. What's divine wisdom? Divine wisdom is subscribing and submitting to the words of God. Subscribing and submitting to the words of God. Now, this sounds like the easiest thing to do until you have an opportunity of doing it. Most of the time, the hardest thing to do if you are not a genuine seeker of wisdom is to despise the word of God. The Bible says, he that despises the word, what will happen to him shall be destroyed. Proverbs 20. He that despises the word shall be destroyed. So it's possible to despise God's wisdom. So Jesus said, any man that hears my word and does what he hears or heard, he's a, I will liken him to a wise man. He said, there's a man I know that existed. A wise man. I watch him from heaven and I watch two people. One was building. Two, they were both building. One built in a hurry. He became a star overnight. Until the storm, the rain, the wind showed up. The Bible says he fell down and great was the fall of that man's house. He said, but this other one took time. He was there building on the rock, digging the ground, digging the ground. And as I watched him from yonder, I, I, I observed that this guy kept digging and digging and digging. And when he built his house, it was built on the rock. And he did not know that things will go wrong with life. He didn't know that coronavirus will show up and doctors will be scrambling for a result. But he built his faith before the virus showed up. Has been laying hands on his children, anointing his head, has been eating the flesh and drinking the blood. And so the virus showed up and the virus is viralized. So the virus meant to kill is dead. Why? Because the individual invested time in building himself ahead of the challenge. So the scripture says, wisdom will preserve you. And in the first service I said wisdom, how does wisdom preserve? It gives you the opportunity of seeing evil before it comes. So one, sit down and think and say, say to himself, I'm building. What is the worst that can ever happen? So, when you build your future with the worst in mind, it's almost impossible for that future to expire. So, you now begin to pursue the promotion that wisdom brings. He said, if you exalt wisdom, you will not even have to beg for what? For promotion. What is wisdom? He's subscribing and submitting to God's word. Now, I want to do some things. I have not subscribed to God's word. How do I know I have not subscribed? I have not subscribed if I think I don't have to look for God's word for any area of my life. You must come to a place where every department of your life is powered by the word of God. Your finances must be encapsulated in the word. Your health must be powered by the word. You begin to secure your health before the next virus shows up. 
He said, you are like a wise man. That wise man built his house when the virus showed up. When all the calamity, poverty, economy meltdown showed up. He said, none of the things affected his house. Because when you exalt wisdom, she promotes you. How does wisdom promote people? Wisdom promotes you by making you a commander of success. Wisdom promotes you by making you a commander of success. Let's look at a few things and I close. Wisdom, according to scripture, is the commander of success. You want to succeed in life, you must go for wisdom. The wiser you are, the more successful you become. The foolish you are, the foolisher. <laughs> you are or the unwiser you are there is a word like that in the unsuccessful you become whether success in finance, health relationship, marriage ministry whatever you are doing with your life if wisdom the wisdom of God powers any aspect of your life that aspect will command success. There are people that are success in their businesses, but they are not success at all in their what health. They are not successful at all in their health. The wisdom, unfortunately, kamonde bratayando su bradayagadaba. I'm just looking. A message came in, right? Someone sent in a message just now, eight minutes ago. And they said, hospital sent a message this morning. I don't know how true is this. And this is, right? It hasn't been verified by me. But they said, hospital sent a message this morning that this virus seems to be spreading quickly via petrol or gas pump. Gas pump. So, you have to ask They've asked everyone, everyone to wear gloves when pumping gas. I just said that now. I didn't know. I said in the first service. That if you depend on common sense, the wisdom of man to protect you from this virus, you will have common results. It will find a way of attacking you. You have to depend on the wisdom of God. That is superior sense. And the wisdom of God is what keeps you healthy. The wisdom of God makes you a commander of success. How does wisdom promote? It makes you a commander of success. Daniel chapter 12 verse 3. Let's go quickly. I'm just going to give you the scriptures. Let me write them. Daniel chapter 12 verse 3. Daniel chapter 12 verse 3. Everyone let's read together. Daniel chapter 12 verse 3. Daniel 12 3. Can you read Daniel 12 3? Everyone Daniel 12 3. Everybody read one to go. They that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the earth of the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars. So the scripture says if you are wise you will shine. That means wisdom makes you a commander of success. To shine means to be successful. To shine means to excel. To shine means to be productive. To shine means to be an achiever. So the scripture says wisdom will make you what will cause a man to shine. The wise shall shine has the brightness of the firmament and with their shining evangelism becomes easy because when you shine he said you'll be able to convert and turn many to righteousness they that be
be wise. If you're watching online, I speak over your life that the spirit of wisdom will come upon you and you will begin to excel. I pray as you exalt wisdom by the power by the power authority in the name of Jesus, this wisdom you embrace, this wisdom you exalt will cause your face to shine, will bring you promotion, will cause your destiny to open up to you. You will become a commander of success in the mighty name of Jesus. Can I hear a shout amen? amen? Daniel chapter 1 verse 4. Quickly. Let's read Daniel 1 4. And we skip to 17 and 20. Let's read that together. One to go. Daniel 1 4. One to go. Read it loud and clear, please. Children in whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science and such has had ability to do what? In the, go back please. Such as have had ability in them to do what? To do what? To do what? I thought somebody would stand. To do what? To do what? I thought you would really stand, stand, stand. To do what? You can sit. Have ability in them to do what? To stand. Where? Where are they supposed to stand? Let me hear you read it loud and clear. In the king's I prophesy to you from henceforth. You will stand in king palaces. And not just king palaces. You won't just stand there. You will sit with great men. In the name of Jesus. Sit down. And whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. So the king wanted to select. He wanted people that will walk in the king palace. So he had picked all these Jewish people from their country because they disobeyed God. And now he wanted some of them. But the king said, I don't want a dummy in my palace. So every time you ignore the pursuit of wisdom or the exaltation of wisdom, to exalt also means to amplify. Wisdom is just by her children. Every time you, you despise or ignore the pursuit of wisdom, the exaltation of wisdom, the exercising of wisdom, you are actually shutting your doors unknowingly. If you don't pursue the wisdom of how to speak or how to process things and to think, guess what? You will stand before your destiny helper and say stupid things and your destiny helper say, this I can't keep in my palace. So the king said, I want you to scrutinize all of these Jewish guys. They are here as slaves, but some of them will be higher slaves. They are prisoners of war. Some will walk in the farm, in the bush, taking care of the toilet, but some will walk in the palace. But I don't want an idiot to come to the palace. I don't want somebody that it takes 30 days, 30 years to teach them one thing. He said, because they have to learn the language of the Chaldeans. You are teaching them one language. It's taking them forever to understand. He said, bring me people that are skillful. Bring me people that understand navigation. Bring me people that are able to do what? To learn. It's taking you forever to learn one principle. And in life, there are so many principles you need to learn and master before you master life. So you have not learned the elementary principles because it's too hard. Fasting and prayer is too hard. Standing when you feel sleepy is too hard. All this kind of thing is too hard. If you don't learn simple principles, he said, how can you stand before the king? So guess what he said? Get me those who are quick learners. Look at verse 17. Let's read verse 17 together. I want to go. 
Everybody read one to go. As for these four children, what happened? God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. And what happened? And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Can I tell you that there are things God put within you that will open doors on their own. So if you exalt wisdom, you don't struggle to open certain doors. If you exalt wisdom, kings will look for you. And when kings look for you, once you start walking the king palace, listen to me, you don't walk to earn, you walk to learn. You are learning how to be a king. You serve in the king's palace. That might look like your workplace, but that's actually your prophecy. The king's palace is telling you, tomorrow you will own the palace. You don't have to dethrone this current no, you work in a certain company. What is God saying to you? Tomorrow you will own that company. You work in a certain place. Maybe what you do now, you work for Uber or you drive a bus or you work wherever you work. Great job, small job. Whatever you do, God is letting you know that the spirit of ownership is what wisdom infuses into you. So you begin to say, I will own this. Not that I will kill the owner and take theirs and the owner of uber the founder creator of uber didn't have to kill taxi people to own he just have to buy something greater and better than taxi everyone navigated the man that owned marianos didn't have to kill the owner of dominic's all he did was to provide marianos and marianos suddenly became like 10 times better than dominic's and people literally walked away from dominic's and in less than one year Dominic completely shut down and they're out of business. Let me tell you what God is trying to tell you. God is saying, I'm infusing wisdom into you. If you exalt this wisdom, this wisdom will promote you, will make you valuable, will cause kings to look for you and when they bring you to the palace you start smiling and laughing because you say this is not just where I belong this is who I am. I'm about to build my own palace. I'm about to create my own world. Somebody shout amen. amen. Divine is D-I. All right. So, take note of this. Oh, verse 20. Let's do verse 20 quickly. I can't give you all. Let me close now. Verse 20. Verse 20. What a good God we serve. I love this God. Verse 20. Everybody read one to go. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them. Let me warn you. If you claim to have wisdom, the king will inquire of you. So if you have fake wisdom, you will pee on your pants. Of course, and when kings inquire of you, if you have fake wisdom, King Nebuchadnezzar said, all of you wise men in my land, die. I will kill you. Execute them. Daniel said, no, 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 no. I can't die with these people. Daniel said, give me time. If you have fake wisdom, when the king inquire, you will be so shocked. If you have false glory, when you are elevated, you will be so shocked. I'm telling you. That's why do not seek a platform you have not allowed God to work on you for. God will have to work on you before he gives you what he has worked for you. Because some people give them a stage they are not prepared for. That stage becomes their grave. Promote a foolish person bring them to a place of honor or position. Unfortunately, you will be shocked what the outcome will be. It will destroy them faster. That's why Paul warns, he said, do not give the position of honor to a novice lest what he be destroyed because what? He becomes arrogant. He becomes arrogant. 
A novice can't be corrected. A novice is so conscious of their position and not the principle that sustains their position. King Saul was given a position. God gave him that position. Two years later, God walked away from him. He remained in the position for 40 years. But the way he died, his son died. And can you imagine that after he died, 70 of his sons were killed the same day. What a life. What a waste. If you operate with human wisdom or intellectual wisdom, it will shock you. It doesn't add up at the end of the day. If you operate with God's wisdom, the king will inquire. But I'm here to say to you, if you're listening to me, that when the king inquire, because I know the king will inquire, for some of you, the next quarter we're entering into, your inquiry is coming. Oh, you only know about credit card company inquiring your credit. Don't worry about that. A very hard inquiry is coming. And they will sit down and say, who, who can we make the manager? Who can we make the principal? Who can we make the surgeon general? Who can we make the chief surgeon? The attorney general? Who can we make? They will inquire. And when ye, they inquire concerning your life, what happened to Daniel will happen to you. I love the scripture. Take it down. Not a novice. Let's be lifted up with Right, he falls into the condemnation of the devil. That's how you know a novice. A novice is more conscious of position. If you are in a church and you do something wrong and you are disciplined and you react and you get mad, you are reacting. You are a novice. Are you following me? Because anybody, any spiritual father or mother you have that cannot correct you and can't discipline you when discipline is needed, they don't love you. And if you can't submit to the discipline of any man of God or woman of God, leave that place. Otherwise, you will hurt your destiny and hurt yourself. Are you following me? So, what God is saying is that most people, unfortunately, they have fake glory. So, when the time comes for real test, they miss it. Now, continue. Verse 20. The king inquired of them what happened. He found what? He found them what? Ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all his realm. They, he found them ten times better. He found them ten times better. The three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and the fourth one called Daniel, he found them ten times better. So as a covenant child of God, you are always at least ten times ahead of those that operate with intellectual wisdom. They may have PhD and you have GED. I promise you, divine wisdom is greater than intellectual wisdom. It's good to press on and get the best you can get. But I need you to know that there are certain things that a carrier of divine wisdom will command and decree and achieve that intellectual wisdom cannot achieve. I prophesy over your life in the name of Yeshua, the son of the living God, the Cabo Sande Brekediata, you will be found ten times better. I decree the wisdom of God take over your life. Let God's wisdom take over your life. Let God's wisdom take over your life. In the name of Jesus. Take notes of these words as I close. One, how does wisdom promote you? It makes you a commander of success. One, wisdom is the commander of success. Number two, success has no respect for paper or certificates. It answers to productive thinking. It answers to productive thinking. Someone who has certain degrees but can't think productively will be an irregular or an ordinary person, lower and lesser than someone who is a good thinker. Number three, in a school of success, wisdom is the major factor. If you want to be successful, then you must pursue wisdom. Number four, The depth and strength of your success is determined by the depth and strength of your wisdom. The depth, 
So I might say it this way. The depth, height, and strength of your success is determined by the depth, height, and strength of your wisdom. So it is wisdom that guarantees durable success. Number five. Every gain of life is a product of an effective use of the brain. Every gain in life is a product of the effective use of the brain. God's servant, Papa Edipo said, God gave you the brain so you can give him the rest. He said, your gain is in your brain. Where is the seat of wisdom? The brain, the mind. Right? We'll look at that towards the next week Sunday. The seat of wisdom is the mind. So, if you want to be successful, you exalt wisdom. What will wisdom do to you? Wisdom will in turn, in born to to, will in turn promote you. When wisdom promotes you, wisdom makes you a commander of success. When you become a commander of success, this is what the scripture says. You will reign above. You will always be at least 10 times better and 10 times ahead of magicians, astrologers. Remember, these are the users of what the diabolic and demonic wisdom. Satanic wisdom, magicians, astrologers. The astrologers, they use intellectual wisdom and diabolic wisdom. And in the first service, I said, most people must pay attention to this. Diabolic wisdom is what? Gaining access to the spirit realm and utilizing the spirit realm to your advantage illegally. Many people gain access to the spirit realm illegally. Witch doctors, wicked people, they gain access to the spirit world, but they utilize it. And as they utilize it, guess who becomes a victim? Those that don't have access to the spirit world. So wisdom makes you a commander of success. And your mind is the seat of wisdom. And so how do you become successful? By productively using your brain. You think well. And you use. The last word I want to give to you is that, oh, God is a good God. God wants you to command exploit and to do exploit. The scripture says, they that know their God shall be strong and shall do exploits. But exploits is a function of divine wisdom. You do exploits when you have wisdom. Exploits talks about outstanding success. How do you have outstanding success? Go for God's wisdom. So, what is your responsibility? Your responsibility is to go in search of divine wisdom. Go for God's wisdom. In the next service, I'll look at how we quickly do that and we put things together for me, I'm doing what God said do. Are you with me? I do. I'm doing what God said do. So most times you just act in obedience. Trust God. Do the ridiculous. Watch God do the miraculous. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday is a great day. But since Sunday will be shut down, we're still going to have service online. But guess what we'll do? We're doing our main service today. So God wants you to go in search of wisdom. So that when there is a situation, he overturned the mountains 
by the roots. When there is a situation, you don't become a victim of life. When things stop moving for others, then things keep moving faster for you. Because this is the season of real supernatural announcement. You may not think coronavirus is here for any good thing. That coronavirus, this coronavirus will come, it will pass. But those that trust in the Lord will supernaturally stand out. And I'm telling you, child of God, don't undermine what God is about to do. Get ready to stand out. Say, I will stand out. Say, I will stand out. Say, I will stand out. All right, as you write, let's read Daniel chapter 2, verse 46. Daniel 2, 46. Everyone, let's read that together. One to go. Daniel 2, 46. Daniel 2, 46. Daniel was found better than the rest. You will be better than the rest. Everybody, let's read. One to go. Then the king Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face and worshipped God. No, he worshipped God. Are you kidding me? Do you know that your prayer for destiny helper is good. But if you exalt wisdom, I promise you, destiny helpers are praying for you. Yeah. You are praying, Lord, bring my destiny helper. There are people that they are praying, you are their destiny helper. They may have more position than you, but their position does not in any way negate your wisdom. You are the helpers others are looking for. Daniel provided po solution to the king's confusion and the king worshipped Daniel. The king that always sought for worship now worshipped Daniel. Watch and see. A time is coming for some of you. Your phone will be buzzing and ringing because kings will be calling you. Oh, this is what is happening. What do you think we should do? What do you think I should do? What do you think we should do? Because most of you, what God is doing with this service is to supernaturally position you in the realm of the spirit. Announcing you in the world of the spirit. I'm telling you, things are happening. Right now, you are being announced in the realm of the spirit. And what is the announcement? This is the one that can handle complications. This is the one that will handle complications. So I prophesy over your life. You are not seeking to be worshipped, but great men will bow before you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Read on everyone. Finish it. And what did, I, what did he say? And commanded that they should offer an oblation and sweet odors unto him. He said, bring sacrifice to Daniel. I have never seen a man like this. Bring sacrifice to this Daniel. Ah, the king. But he said, oh, he commanded that they should offer oblation. You are not looking for oblation. But they will give you prophet offering. They will give you royal offering. You didn't hear that. They will give you royal offerings. I said they will give you royal offerings. If you're watching this service online, expect God to move in your life. You will be honored in the name of Jesus. Amen. My next service, my preaching will be very short. It's going to be 30 minutes preaching so we can catch up with our time as it is written and start way. I mean, we're still kind of on time, but we're entering to the second service. But we'll catch up with our time. I do, do, do what God said do. And when I'm done, I said, I have done what you asked me to do. And everyone that is under the glory of my obedience, I guarantee you, your days are very, your days of honor, your days to command extreme success are so close. And before you open your eyes, close your eyes, flip your eyes, I guarantee you will find yourself standing before royalty yeah. and they will command 
that you be offered oblation and sweet odors. Say amen. amen. Finish it for the purpose of understanding. The next verse, everyone read. The king answered unto Daniel and said, Of a truth it is that your God is a God of what? Gods and a Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets seeing thou couldest reveal this secret. So in the fifth and sixth service I will anoint people to have access to deep revelations. Anoint the eyes to open. Uh, so I begin to cut my service so that the next service is supposed to be what time? 12.30? Yeah. The next service is 12? Yeah. Oh no, the next service is, is supposed to be now. No, it's supposed to be now, then 12.30. <laughs> okay, we we'll get used to this, seven, this, all this service. So, I will anoint people during the 5th and the 6th, no, the 4th, 5th, 6th service. I want to do that specifically so people can gain access to the spirit realm unhindered. It's possible. Say it's possible. He said indeed your God is above every other God. So what am I saying to you now? I'm saying to you beloved that your wisdom will cause kings to respect your God. If that's not your desire then I don't know what you call success. Success, promotion, is when people look at you and say, no, this one, no, 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 no. I don't know how to describe it. I don't know how to explain it, but this person, this person, this person, say this person, say this person. So look at what the king did, which is coming to you as we pray. One, two, read. Then the king made Daniel a great man and gave him many who is ready to receive many great gifts he said and also made him what ruler over the whole province of Babylon what does the wisdom of God do it promotes you what happened to Daniel he was promoted what will happen to you you will be promoted lift your right hand and say I receive it I receive it he said the king made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief of the governors. There were great people in the land, but Daniel was greater than them. He chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. So he became the head of the witch doctors, the native doctors, the magicians, the astrologers. I prophesy over your life that as we enter into the second quarter of this year, by the hand of the almighty God, you will become king, you will be a ruler, you will be distinguished, you will be higher than you've ever been in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Finish verse 49. Church, if your voice is your voice, read it. One to go. Then Daniel requested of the king and he said Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the princes of Babylon, province of Babylon. But Daniel sat in the king's gate. He sat, he was the one controlling access to the king. So guess what his promotion did? Daniel's promotion brought about the promotion of his church members. It brought about the promotion of his friends. If what I'm teaching you is God's word, yes. if the wisdom I'm imparting into you is God's wisdom, yes. today I guarantee all the people praying, Lord, promote me, promote me, your promotion yes. will be the express answer to their prayers. Amen. I say your promotion will be the express answer to their prayers. Amen. If you believe it, lift your hands and say, Father, thank you Amen. for your word. Amen. I receive the word. Amen. I celebrate your word. Amen. My Father, Amen. I ask Amen. for divine wisdom. Amen. You gave Solomon wisdom. Amen. You gave Daniel wisdom. Amen. I ask 
ask for wisdom. I receive wisdom. Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your voice and pray in the name of Jesus. Ask God for wisdom. Ask Him for wisdom. Ask Him for wisdom. Ask for divine wisdom. Ask for divine wisdom. Ask for divine wisdom. Ask God for that wisdom. God is about lifting you. Ask for higher wisdom. Higher wisdom that will change your story. Open your mouth. If you are interested, then you must ask. You must ask for wisdom. You must ask for wisdom. You must ask for wisdom. Let the koto parakate limbroko paradesa limbroko paradela limbroko parakate mo lebroko bereke lekete kete lito sobre kente kadiya libron te kabora lebreke sumbara gate la tuta ta la tuta ta la tuta ta iko parate keto bra ita me ota kele. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Higher wisdom. Daniel had higher wisdom. And the Bible says he was placed above. Above. All the governors. All the magicians. All the astrologers. He was placed above. My question to you is. Do you want to be beneath or do you want to be above? Do you want to be beneath or do you want to be above? above? So exalt the wisdom of God. Don't just get wisdom and pocket it. Don't get it and keep it in your house. Once you get it, exalt it. Let it become so clear to everyone that you have chosen to live your life by the wisdom of God. Live your life by the wisdom of God. Sometimes the wisdom of God requires that you be patient. Sometimes the wisdom of God requires that you be humble. Sometimes the wisdom of God requires that you are just faithful. Sometimes the wisdom of God requires that you are just focused. The wisdom of God is instructive in nature. It's supernatural in dimension, but it's instructive in nature. So I pray for you that the very instruction that you need in order to navigate the way your GPS says to you, turn left, turn right. It's instructing you on how to get to your destination. I pray for you that whatever has beclouded your mind and darkened your heart and prevents you from accessing divine wisdom, I pray for you that such cloud of darkness be removed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Daniel was lifted above all the governors, all the magicians. I don't know your current competition in life. Lift your right hand. I stretch my hand towards you. And I decree from this moment, if you embrace this heavenly wisdom from this moment, I command you to be 10 times higher and better than your competition. Amen. Higher and better than your competition. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. God is giving you speed in every department of your life. Amen. I see speed in the name of Jesus. Amen. The king bowed down and worshipped Daniel. Daniel didn't say, no, 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 don't worship me. Daniel let him know that this is God, the God I serve. And the king himself testified. He said, of a truth, your God is God of gods, over gods. Your Lord is Lord over all kings. I pray for your testimony as you continue to exalt wisdom, as you continue to grow in wisdom. I decree your testimony will be the kind of testimony of Daniel Amen. better than that of Daniel. Amen. Your friends will look at you and say of your truth, your God is the real God. Your foes will also declare your God is the real God. Your employers and employees will declare your God is the real God. Anyone capable of changing your story for the best will declare your God is a real God. Amen. Now be promoted. Amen. Be promoted. Amen. Be promoted. Amen. Spiritually be promoted. Amen. Matrimonially be promoted. Amen. Academically be promoted. Amen. Relationally be promoted. Amen. I decree your career be promoted. Amen. In your business is be promoted. Amen. Financially be promoted. Amen. Receive promotion. Amen. When your aim reaches the heaven, take double. Amen. Wave your hands and give thanks to God. Give him praise. Thank you, Father. 
give him glory. Bless his name. Bless his name. Lift your voice and appreciate him. Say something. Say something. Appreciate him. He's worthy of our praise. In 